and skill. And um, within that, I mean, so that comes under the umbrella, in my opinion, of technical language. Now, just a, a quick apology before, before we start. I've handed over the technology side of things to, to Chris, uh, and that's in a nutshell because I'm rubbish with technology. So I'm gonna every now and then ask Chris to move the slide on. So I hope that's not a major distraction. But as you, as you can see there, guys, the first, the first slide we're looking at, we're gonna spend the first 10 or 15 minutes talking about technical language, what it means, why is it important? And then we're going to talk about um, technique and skill or what are the main difference is. Um, Chris, can I, just, can I just jump in there? I just got a message from a gentleman called Ben White not the Arsenal defender. Ben is a friend of mine from Chelsea. He says he can't hear us. I'm just wondering if everyone can hear me okay. We can hear you. Yeah. So I guess it, it may just be may just be Ben. Um, and I wish I could help Ben, but I don't think I can. Maybe he can lip read me. But um, okay, so if we if we just move on, Chris, with the, the next slide. Okay, so as I say, te technical language. Now, as, as coaches, you would hope that we are, you know, we're masters of different things. We need to give physical demonstrations. Uh, we need to know our tactics. We need to know the sports nutrition side of it, the, the, uh, the physical conditioning side of it. But obviously the most fundamental thing is, is speech. As coaches, we, we do it all the time. And I think if we are not getting uh, our language right, we are really doing a disservice to some of our players. And I, I, I have seen all over the world, there seems to be a confusion with how we use technical language, what it means. And, and I think that's, that's causing problems for, for some of our players. So just here to, to keep it as brief as possible, what is technical language? Well, to my mind, there are words that have a specific meaning within the context of an activity. Uh, the language should be high level. So it should be educational, it should be informative, it should actually it should actually benefit our players. It's not words for for the sake of it. Uh, and the final bit here, and this is where you know people's generalizations and unspecific language can can come into it. You know, people can you know words can have different meanings, but we need to try and keep our language as specific to specific to football. So Ben, if I um sorry Chris, if I can just pause you there, guys. What I wanted what I wanted to say on, on this topic is. We use words, we use words all the time. And I, and I was thinking of one word earlier uh, as an example. So if we take the word uh, flow, the word flow. Now, in general conversation, everyone knows what flow, what flow means. Most words have a, a general meaning. So flow means an, unim, an unimpeded journey. But when in terms of using technical language, that word will mean different things depending on the context. If you're talking about flow <clears throat> to a doctor, they might be thinking about a flow of blood. If you're talking to a scientist, that might be energy flow. If you're talking to somebody in finance, that would be a flow of money. And obviously how they facilitate that uh, and work with that involves many, many different things. Obviously facilitating the flow of blood is very different to facilitating the flow of money. <clears throat> and within a sporting context, if we take uh, one word that is technical language, uh, dribble, now, we all know what dribble means roughly. It means an individual player um, in possession of the ball traveling. Now, that is similar in many sports. It's similar in basketball. It's, it's a solo ball travel. It's similar in hockey. It's a solo ball travel. But as coaches, if we were gonna teach um, dribbling to a group of, group of soccer players, it's gonna be obviously completely different technical understanding to a hockey player. There's different equipment, they're using different parts of their feet. So we have to make sure that within the context of the sport, we know what we're talking about. So Chris, if we could just move on to the next slide. <clears throat> now I've given you some very <clears throat> obvious examples of words that have a general meaning, but also words that have a specific meaning. So, you know, if we're taking the, the verb to, to curl, well, we know what curl means. It means to make something curly. Uh, to put it to put it simply but if you're talking about how to how to curl hair if you're talking to a, a hairdresser or a beauty therapist as opposed to a footballer how do you curl a football now we know approximately what we're talking about that involves curling or bending something but again how we would coach these things the the the, the sets of of skills and techniques required to to teach these things 
are massively different. Uh, if we can move on to the next one, Chris. <clears throat> again, similar here. If we take in the verb to shoot. Now, shoot again has a general as a general meaning in everyday life. But if we're now looking at it in a sporting situation, now if you're in into archery, shooting an arrow is very different to shooting a football. We know approximately it's about hitting a target. But the way you would teach shooting an arrow, the techniques are a million miles from how you would teach someone to uh, shoot a shoot a football. Um, again, if we could move on, Chris, that would be really helpful. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> one of the one of the reasons I first uh, became interested in technical language and also skill and technique <clears throat> came about from a lecture I, I took part in many many years ago, and the lecturer really captivated my my imagination and my attention because he was speaking about how from his experiences in, foot, in football, rugby, there were many coaches who had got to an incredibly high level, but he, in his mind had not, had not mastered um, key terminology and the basics of accurate education, of accurate um, vocabulary. So one of the things that we want to try and improve on is our technical language. Now, there, obviously, there are some things that we really want to stay away from that really hinder our quality of our communication and hinder uh, the development of, of our players. So if we want to use technical language correct, uh, correctly, in the first slide, I mentioned that language must be specific. It must be educational and informative. Otherwise, we may as well stay quiet. OK, so if we're starting on the left, Something that all coaches do, and I fall into the habit of it in the heat of the moment, we use we use jargon. Now, the terminology I'm using, it perhaps are slightly more English slants, but I'm sure the American guys as well have your own terminology. And sometimes you think, does, you know, does that actually mean anything? So I've picked a, a bit of a comical um, phrase we use here, which is put it in the mixer, which basically means you're two nil down with five minutes to go. And essentially what it means is just smash the ball into their penalty area and see what happens. Now, is there such thing as a mixer on a football pitch? Uh, of course, of course, there's not. So it doesn't really it doesn't really mean anything. the players have an idea of, of, of what you mean. But it's it's just jargon. Another one is, you know, if you want to be perhaps get a little bit physical would be to put, put a reducer on someone, which basically means put a hard tackle on their best player to terrify them. So again, there's no such thing as a reducer, it doesn't mean it? it's just jargon. Then we move on to um, non-specific. So, you know, we will all say things really, they don't actually give the players any insight into, into how to do it. You know, for example, keep hold of the ball. Well, we know we need to keep hold of the ball because if we're not in possession of the ball, we can't score. And we know that if we can't score, we can't win matches. But as it says there, it's just vague and obvious. But if we're saying to our players, keep hold of the ball, now they know that, but are we telling them how to go about it? Are we saying what we need to do to keep hold of the ball? You know, another one might be, let's use the space in behind them. You know, it's like, well, how? Are we going to do that by playing long balls behind? Are we going to do that by trying to break lines, by running with the ball or dribbling? So again, non-specific doesn't really help our players. And then finally, um, inaccurate. Now, this is the, the, the worst one, in my opinion. I can filter out jargon from coaches. I, you know, as long as I, I, I believe that they're an expert, I can sometimes forgive the, the jargon, sometimes the non-specific, but the inaccurate. And this kind of leads on to the main thrust of what we're talking about. I think language around technique and skill has got so um, inaccurate that we are using re the wor words in completely the wrong, wrong way. So we, I've got this example here, he or she is a skillful player. Now we hear that all the time, but I'm not sure people actually know how they could quantify that statement. If, if you, know, you hear someone say, he's such a skillful player. If you posed the question and said, well, how are they a skillful player? You'd get all kinds of answers back. Now I said, there's nothing wrong with the statement per se, because there are skillful players. But I often think when we're talking about skillful players, we're actually talking about players with a very good technique. And if we continue down, down this road, if we're using skill to describe technique, 
then what is a technique? And eventually the word will just become perhaps obsolete and, and, and meaningless. And yet as coaches, we know it's one of the most, um, one of the most important, important things we must coach. Um, so Chris, if we can move on. Thank you. Now, this is where I'm gonna um, hand over to Chris a little bit. There are, I, I think Chris is gonna be able to um, give you some links. Now, we're now gonna get into a little bit more about what is a technique and what is a skill and how we can identify the differences. Now, this, this is like a starter activity. It's not to um, humiliate, it's not to say, you know, I'm right, you're wrong. Because again, this is all my opinion. This is all my opinion. But there are three um, videos for you to watch. Now, the one on the left of your screen is gonna be a short dribbling video. The middle one is gonna be on shooting. And the one on the right is going to be um, on, on turning. Now, I think what we, dis we um, decided, Chris, is to give people two or three minutes. Is that right? Yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna get put in the chat the link. I'm gonna try to put in the chat. Whoops. Bear with me for a second, everybody. Um, the link to the first video, and you guys can watch it uh, from your computers. I was just gonna say there, Chris, um, with the, the, the dribbling video, um, these were all deliberately picked at random from, from YouTube <clears throat> without any particular thought from me. I've looked at them. <clears throat> if you're gonna watch the dribbling video, I recommend skipping to about two minutes and watching a minute or so. When you watch the shooting video, you can watch that straight from the start for about a minute. And when you watch the turning one, again, straight from the start, you don't need to watch all of it. But if you're going to watch the dribbling one, the first two minutes is mainly the guy advertising and talking all kinds of stuff. So, um, yeah. So did that come through on the chat, everybody? Yes. Good. <clears throat> One skill. So can okay. I just check at the moment, Chris? Are, are the guys watching? Because I obviously I, I can't see the. Yeah, because I can't. Uh, hopefully, you guys are able to watch that. If someone could just give us a shout, whether it's working or not. Yep, that first link worked. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do is, um, while you guys are watching that one, I'll get the second link up. Yeah. As I say, I wouldn't spend more than, than 60 seconds. It's just a little visual aid as to, I mean, we know what dribbling is. You can see from the, from the picture, but it's just, you know, there may be some people here who um, are not necessarily heavily involved in coaching. It's just to give an idea, you know, of what dribbling is, the second one shooting, the third one turning. Not that we really need it, but um, the videos will sometimes, they will actually allow us to focus on some, what the confusion is all about. So I can just see Sterling there is saying that he can't hear. I'd, I'd say there, Sterling, it's not, it's not a huge, it's not a huge problem. Um, a lot of the, the, the language in the videos, it's not particularly informative. Um, it's just, as I say, the first one's dribbling a couple of dribbling exercises. The second one is a few shooting drills. And the third one is a guy going through a number of turns. So I don't think that's, um, that's so important. So we'll give it another, another couple of minutes and then I'm just going to ask people. Um, Put that other link in the chat too. I'm just going to say, I, I want people to start thinking about what you're watching now for all three of them. I'd like to put it out there to people um, for all three of these things. Are you watching skill being developed or are you watching technique being developed? And if you can start to think about uh, why they are, in your opinion, skills or techniques, just to get an understanding of where people are with, um, 
with their understanding of skill and technique. And, and then we will move on to uh, my explanation of it. <clears throat> And I've just put in the chat the third video. Okay. Hopefully people can see that. So I'm just looking, Chris, and we've gone about 20 minutes. I think if another couple of minutes, I mean, I know some people have been saying that maybe they'll watch it afterwards. That's fine. I think people can get a uh, an idea of, uh, of what we're talking about from, from the picture. Okay. I mean, in the middle, we can see Didier Drogba shooting. Um, whether they watch the video or not is, is not um, is not totally essential. We can see Johan Cruyff turning there, and people know what a turn is. So, you want me to go to the next slide? Um, what we'll do, Chris, we'll, we'll pause there. Now, I don't know if people want to jump in here or if there's a way that they can, you know, raise a thumb or whatever it is. Again, I'm not I'm not fantastic with the technology. But the first, if anyone watched the first video, we're talking there about dribbling. Now, I've deliberately put this one. Can I just throw it out there to people? If we're talking about dribbling, is dribbling a skill or a technique? If There's a question to... from, from Marty. He's asked, are they all technique? Are they all technique? Well, I'm, I'm putting the question out to, to Marty. So I'd like Marty to, I know Marty. Uh, I'd like Marty to put her neck on the line and tell me. Um, I'm going to say that they are all technique because technique is the foundation of every football movement. And if you do not know where to make contact with the ball, it's it's impossible to call yourself a skill player. So when, when you're dribbling, you need to know the correct body position, the correct foot position and um, where it's going to take you um, on, on the field. OK, now that's uh, that's a very informed answer. And I would like to take a little bit of credit for that because I coach Marty uh, regularly, um, privately. So um, I don't know if we'd actually discuss that, Marty, but full marks to full marks to the answer. I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong, but it was certainly very well explained. So you were saying that you think their technique because it involves all of all of the learning involves the sort of the correct movement of body parts. Anyone else? Anyone else care to agree, disagree, or? Are there different ones there? Are some of them skills? Are some of them techniques? I guess I think of them as almost the exact, exact opposite. Apologize, but the I think of skill as something you can develop one on one. In you know, a player can sit in their backyard and work on a particular skill, the drill mm. that is, mm. versus a technique, which is in that middle one. It's drug, but practicing that in in a game situation. That was that. That's fascinating. That's, that's really fascinating. So it's kind of taking the opposite view to, to Marty. Uh, and what you were saying there is that the, the turns and the skills are sort of typical, what you might call backyard stuff, you know, that mums and dads might do with the kids. Kids might do on their own. You can put a few cones out and they can improve their, improve their skills. Whereas, you know, what you might be saying there about what Drogba's doing shooting um, unless you've got a huge back garden, that is, um, it might come more under the category of, of, of a technique because it's more perhaps more open, involves more moving parts, perhaps a moving goalkeeper, a goal. Any, anyone else? Anyone else out there want to throw it out? Uh, give us a, In the, us a little... Oh, Hi, go guys. Ahead, yeah, my name is Rick. I'm a I'm a Dutchman. So let me steal the third guy is obviously Jon Cruyff of the Cruyff turn. And he has a quote saying something like, you got to be able to juggle the ball 10,000 times in order to, in a real game, uh, wall pass a ball midair one touch. So where he's going with this is that I think in Cruyff's language and in the Dutch culture, skill is considered circus stuff. Uh, step overs for no good reason, flashy, flamboyant for the cameras kind of thing, while technique, and this is where I agree with the previous speaker, uh, I understand technique to be functional, uh, game-related, 
to get yourself uh, out of a tight spot, for example. So skill for the circus, technique for the game, functional. But I'm not sure if we all uh, will agree with that, but that's how I understand it. Yeah, I mean, before I come back to Rick, because that, that's really interesting, and it's really interesting to get different perspectives from, from around the world, because I think sometimes the national characteristics of our game shape, shape our thinking. Um, I, I might be showing my age here a little bit, and I don't kind of want to spoil what I'm going to go on and say, but, um, you know, we might often hear players of the ilk or of the style of Neymar, uh, Ronaldinho, going back a little bit, they're always described as skillful. We sometimes think amazing players, but you know, as as Rick saying, circus tricks, step overs, you know, rainbow flicks, all that kind of stuff. Whereas, you know, is that but is that lazy thinking a little bit? Are we going down the stereotype of they're Brazilian, they're from South America, they must be, they must, you know, all be able to juggle a tin can or an orange up in the air. Whereas, if you ever go back even further, I always used to hear. Lothar Matthäus, he was a great German footballer, played in many, many World Cups. He was always described as a technician, a great technician. Now, is that just because he was German? You know, we associate German lazy stereotypes of German technique and South American skill, when actually, if Lothar Matthäus did a step over and then played the ball off to someone else, would we sort of think, oh, that's technical because, you know, the way he did it looked a little bit more stiff and mechanical. Whereas, you know, if someone like Neymar did it, he's very supple and a real master at these things, wouldn't we then suddenly think, oh God, he's so skillful. But when you boil it, when you break it down, it's like, what is making us think that, you know, perhaps depending on the, the style of which it's done, because I think it's nothing to do with style of how it comes across. I mean, what Rick's saying is really interesting, you know, like keep ups are for the, for the circus. But what I would say maybe to to Rick there is it's very rare at the top level someone's going to do keep ups in a, in a functional way but what about if the ball comes in first time from a throw in someone takes it on their thigh knocks it over someone's head which Patrick Vieira used to do for Arsenal a lot he'd take it in one touch flick it over on the second then he was away that's what you might call circus stuff in training but, but very very functional so I can see Ben's got um, yeah, Ben's got Rick, his see. hand up he's been very patient yeah alright Ben how are you well, I'm good, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I can, Ben. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, um, like, I believe that um, there are very talented players out there who are skillful, obviously probably born talented, um, like you and Aldinos and whatnot, but also it doesn't mean that someone else who, like, whether you call it average talent or um, an average player, they can still learn and get better, um, like still learn and do the same things that talented people can do with the ball. You know, it's just repetition and practice. So they can still get to that level of learning the techniques, which is obviously where the coaching comes in. You can, even though they're talented players, you can do certain tricks and skills if you like. Other players can get to that level as well, just with some great coaching. So there's two sides there, but it doesn't mean to say that other players can't do them things as well. You know, it's just repetition and practice and like lots of ball manipulation. Yeah. No, no, I, I agree with I agree with Ben. And both of these things, although we haven't really gone into my understanding, which we will do very soon. I know we've kind of gone into a very interesting discussion. I think what Ben's saying is there that both can be coached. And that's absolutely right. They are not magical things that, you know, everyone was born with a finite amount of skills and technique. And of course, as coaches, we've got to improve both and both can be improved. Skill is not a magical thing that, you know, Neymar was just born with. Oh, he's so skillful. That would have been worked on by him and his coaches. Um, I can see a few, a few others. Craig, yeah, and, Craig and Christopher have got their hands up. Yep. Sure. Rob, my, my thing is the skill is the application of a technique in a game-like uh, environment, basically with yeah. pressure. And that's how I would define skill. Because if you can do it, it's like somebody juggling at halftime. Um, that's like the circus act. Those people are at halftime because they can't play during the game um, because they can't do it under pressure. Now, uh, Craig, I would um, I would agree very much with the main thrust of that. And I think the key thing you said was it's the uh, uh, technique. Sorry, skill is the application of the technique. How we do it, when we do it why we do it and yeah there is obviously an, an element of pressure i mean even i can look like a good player 
when no one tackles me, which is saying something. But, you know, under under pressure, my technique will probably start to fail. Um, and that's when it starts to become going into the, the landscape of, of skill. So that we'll, we'll come back to that. I can see one, one more hand there. And it's a lady, but obviously not Christopher Blundell. Sorry, I, my my uh, technique with um, the technical stuff isn't great either. Um, I always thought that, um, yeah, skill plus tactics equals technique. And um, so skills, and, and I think, you know, I mean, they're definitely important, you know, the circus playing or whatever, however you uh, consider them. Um, but, you know, what it does, those uh, practicing those skills as individual players, um, I mean, it really helps them with touch, which is so important when you are on the playing field during a match, because as you said, with the throw in, if you haven't practiced, um, you know, trapping that ball with your thigh a lot of times, um, when it comes to you with that throw in, it's not gonna get to where you're visualizing it as a player to that other player. So I think that skills and tactics are technique. Okay, so I mean, this, this is really interesting. I've, I've, I've got four or five different people, you know, Marty started off very much, you know, explaining what technique is. Um, we, had, we had Rick talking about, you got us thinking about, you know, circus tricks are skills and functional stuff is, 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 more, is more technique. Uh, and we just had a great point there where ta tactics are being introduced. Now, obviously, tactics underpin match performance. Uh, things don't it happen in a game without tactics. And that's really, really interesting stuff. I'd love to have a, a couple more time to go into that. Um, but I'm aware that we're getting to about half past eight. So I think we need to just move on a little bit, Chris. And um, but thanks for those questions and, uh, and input. OK. Now I think, well, and listen, my definition of technique and skill is coming is coming soon. I'm not deliberately trying to be uh, secretive about this, but I think there's a massive falsehood that comes from us not understanding what technique is and not understanding what skill is. And we've got this creation of the skillful player. So, so how many times it says, how many times have we heard coaches, journalists, analysts, and players say, what a great piece of skill. Messi, as an example, is such a skillful player. The winger skillfully dribbled past the fullback. Now, in my when I watch um, pundits, analysts, coaches, more often than not, I think they use this word incorrectly. If we don't understand the difference between the technique and the skill, then how do we know what a skillful player is? And I'm still not sure most coaches know what a technique or a skill is. As, as coaches, we must understand the meaning of the words we use. If we don't, how can we blame our players for not reaching their potential? How can we blame our players for not buying into the ideas of the coach? The coach, the coach must be an expert in technical language. Now, I will forgive a coach jargon, but if I think they are not a, a, an expert in what they're speaking about in terms of the words they use, I will completely switch off. And I think players do as well. I think some players rumble the coach and think, hang on, this guy doesn't know what they're talking about. This, this lady doesn't know what she's talking about. And then I think you've got a big problem. So I think if we're really accurate, we are actually, we're doing the players, we're building their confidence and they're more likely to listen to us. So we can just move on, Chris. <clears throat> okay, and again, we're confusing technique and skill, we're confu in my opinion. And this is my opinion, but it's some research I've done and and studying technique and skill. So if we just take a look at this slide here. So in all my years of coaching, um, one of the biggest shocks to me is the lack of understanding about what a technique is uh, and what a skill is. And I'm not going to name names. I've seen this at professional clubs. I've seen this at grassroots football. I've seen it in, in senior football. And it's a, it's a common thing. It's a very, very common thing. Um, there's also an issue in terms of a lack of understanding amongst coaches and players about the difference between technique and skill. Some people get close to explaining what they are, but the overlap and the distinction gets a bit murky. The coaches, we try to improve our, the technique and skills of our players. However, if we don't understand the difference between the two, how can we develop the players effectively? It's an issue at all levels of football, grassroots to elite. And by understanding what the two words mean, 
we can actually start to educate players um, to a higher level and, and maintain high, higher standards in, in football. So I think we're going to go into now my definition of technique and skill, Chris, if we could just move on. <clears throat> OK, now this I haven't put speech marks, quotation marks, because this this is my understanding of it. So the technique are the physical movements required to perform an action. Every technique is made up of small and sequential actions. Depending on how accurately and efficiently these actions are performed determines the level of success and the aesthetic or the visual quality of the technique. Good technique is indicated by a successful outcome, such as hitting a free kick into the top corner, or if we're looking at aesthetically, how it looks. So if you are performing a turn in the middle of the pitch, maybe there's not much pressure, but if you perform a nice Cruyff turn and accelerate away into space, we can view that aesthetically. So the key point here for me is technique is about the physical movements to make up the whole action. And if they're not followed sequentially, the technique will, will never be right. You know, when we're coaching kids how to side foot a ball, you know, there's a sequence to it. Non-kicking foot goes next to the ball. You lock the ankle of your kicking foot. Head over the ball to maintain balance. Opposite arm up for balance. Swing through the middle of the ball. Now you can teach all those things well, but if they don't do it sequentially, the technique's gonna be is gonna be all over the place. So the key things there I really want us to focus on are actions, sequential makes a technique. So Chris, if we can just move on to uh, skill. So skill is the ability to create an advantageous situation or an opportunity to successfully execute the technique. An example of a skill is a perfectly timed run into the penalty area to meet the ball, or a defender reading the flight of the ball, which allows them to either attack the ball with a header or drop off and gain possession of the ball. In both of these cases, the skill ultimately leads to the technique. In the case of the run into the penalty area, the opportunity to finish is created. And in the case of the defender, the opportunity to header the ball clear or control the ball is created by the skill. Now, as I said, the, the examples I've used, somebody, you know, I think goal scoring is a skill. It's not a technique. Goal scoring is a knack. It's a sense. It's an understanding of the game situation. It involves timing. Now, can you coach someone to score goals? You can, but I don't think you do. I think you coach their finishing, which is a technique. You might finish their heading, their half volleying, their first touch in the box leading up to shot. Now, they are all techniques. Can we coach the skill? Yeah, we would, but we'd do it in a very different way. It would be done much more to do with movement, much more to do with game understanding, much more to do with game analysis, much more to do with watching other players and, and space appreciation. So to my mind, uh, skills ultimately will lead to a technique. If you don't have the skill to find space in the penalty area, you will never have the chance to execute a side foot finish. You know, if you are a defender dropping off and you want to take it down on your chest and play out, if you haven't got the skill to read the flight of the ball, you won't be in the correct position to take it down on your chest and, and it, will go, it will go horribly wrong. So hopefully we're starting to get an understanding of, of how I see um, technique and skill. Now, if I can just pause... If I can just pause there, I'd like to give people a couple of examples of um, players who I think are very strong technical players and are very strong skillful players. Now, we, may, we don't have to know all of these players. It might, some of it might be a little bit dated. Some are more modern, but I will explain why. OK, so if we're talking about what we might consider uh, magicians, players that kids love watching, you know, Somebody will nutmeg a player in a game. Somebody who will sit on the football. The, the magical players, okay? And I'm talking about people like Neymar, Ronaldinho, perhaps not quite a sort of so much of a showman, but De Bruyne, Kevin De Bruyne, is always described as such a, such a skillful player. Now, to my mind, um, they are masters, technically, what they do. Now, if Neymar performs 10 kick-ups in, in the corner of the pitch, that's a technique. Keep-ups are technique. So when we coach kids how to, to perform keep-ups, we take them through the, the technical steps. Eyes on the ball, bring your foot up to about shin height. That, that is a technique. 
And for players to be able to nutmeg someone in a game, that requires an incredible amount of technique. There's skill involved in it, but they are all technique. They're all highly technical players, in, in my opinion. When you see Ronaldinho doing four or five step overs and ghosting past them, step overs are technique. We teach kids how to do step overs. We teach them the sequential movements. And the other side of it, players that we might not consider as so, uh, so skillful, I would consider Haaland, Erling Haaland, very skillful because his skill, his ability to find space, his ability to always be in the right place at the right time. That is not something that can be taught so sequentially. You can't in the middle of a game say, Erland, take three steps to your left, back off now, accelerate to the right, and now you've got a chance to shoot. That is, that is very much skill. Same with Alan Shearer, Gary Lineker. That was skill-based. You know, I don't, I don't think they were, Gary Lineker was massively technically gifted. He probably, he probably would admit to that himself. But his skill, his appreciation of the game and his goal-scoring record speaks volumes. And also, and also there are other midfielders, English midfielders. Frank Lampard, massively skillful player. People may not think of Frank Lampard as skillful, but his goal-scoring record tells you everything about his application of knowledge and his ability to, game after game, from midfield, find the prime area to, um, to, to finish in. So um, I wanted to throw it out there to other people. Who do you consider um, skillful players? Who do you consider highly technical players? Could be from America, could be from England, could be from anywhere. And, and can you give examples of why? Why would you consider these players um, technically gifted or particularly skillful? And any examples from people? Okay, so we've got Zlatan Ibrahimovic, uh, skillful. Can I can I ask for a little bit more about that? What is it that Ibrahimovic does regularly that makes him a, a skillful player? I think he's, you know, to use your analogy, I think he's an early version of Holland, right? He arrives at the right place at the right time to score goals, right? He doesn't necessarily <laughs> overwhelm them with technical um, stepovers, et cetera. Mm. He's he's um he's a complete winner, you know. Obviously, he's done some amazing things, and he he does have a pretty incredible technique. But I I would agree. I think a lot of his skill is um his game understanding, big game understanding, um and as you say, he's always he's always the kind of guy he will score the last minute goal. Now that's a skill, that's a knack, that's knowing you know how to score, how to be in the right place at the last minute. What are the defenders going to be doing? in the last minute. I, I would really agree, really agree with that. I just saw another one, Roberto Carlos, and that was a great answer. He mastered the skills to be a great left back, but he also had the great technique of his, of his crossing and shotting, uh, crossing and shooting. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Roberto Carlos's ball striking technique was, was fantastic. But also people just think he was a flying machine. I didn't see players often get the better of, of Carlos in 1v1s. And that is, that is the skill. That's his understanding of what the winger's going to do. That's his understanding of where to be at the right time. That's his understanding of when to accelerate, when to drop off, okay, when, when to attack. Uh, I just saw from Ben there. Ben, what did you say about Paul Scholes? Was that skill or technique? Technique. Technique, yeah, again, I agree. You know, uh, give us an example. What what were one of his strongest techniques, Ben? Because I've got one in my uh, mind. What did... I would say he'd part in range. Um, because yeah. obviously Beckham was the one on the wide doing the cross and that, but he would pick he would pick out parted uh through through a bunch of players or some one twos or the way he would seed the ball and turn the ball to play the ball forward for an attack. Uh, so there's things like that's how he's receiving of the ball, he's turning of the ball, he's vision to play that ball forward. Um, so he was very good and awareness of how the game should be played. Yeah, no, I, I agree, Ben. I think Paul Scholes is one of those guys, probably in 30 years' time, you, you could take him down the park and he obviously is, his muscle strength would have gone. I think he's still hitting laser 30, 40-yard passes because the technique is just so outstanding. All the learning he's done, the positioning of every body part, it's so ingrained, ingrained in him. And that is a prime example of a technical player and a prime example of great technique. The technique is the cross field pass. That, that's the technique. Pass is, is a cross. Um, 
I was wondering, Chris, if we could move on. Um, <clears throat> so here's a, a little summary for you. Again, this is, you know, I don't want to go into, into court and, um, you know, be, be, be sued for, um, for slanderous comments to other coaches, but this is my understanding of technique and skill. So technique to summarise, it's the mechanics of the movement. You know, foot goes here, uh, swing leg back to here, head, head position here, body position here, balance here. And we might call it textbook learning. You know, how tomorrow, if you're going to go and coach kids how to perform a half volley, you, I would love to see you doing it. And I'm pretty sure you'll be taking them through the steps. You're not just going to say, oh, you know, go on, just smash the ball around. You're going to show them where, what part of your foot you use to make contact. What part of the ball are we trying to make contact with? How far do we want to swing? That's textbook learning. And there's clear steps for the coach and the player to follow. You know, there's not a hard and fast way. Coaches develop and, and, and teach it in different styles. But essentially, if we watched everyone here teaching a side foot pass, I'm pretty sure we would follow similar steps. And as Ben was talking about earlier, it's a repetition of the correct steps that will improve performance over time. If you're, re if you're repeating the, the steps incorrectly, it's going to get worse or you'll just have a, a muddled technique for the rest of your life. But if it's done properly and re repeatedly, it will get better. And it's, again, it's an organised and sequential movement of body parts. Skill. Sometimes I consider it more of a knack or a way of finding how to do, how to, how to do something, how to find success. And it doesn't always involve the ball. You know, techniques in, involve the ball. That's another uh, key distinction. Skills don't always involve the ball. It may appear to be more elusive for coaches to improve and for players to learn. You know, again, Frank Lamb, why is he always in the right place at the right time? Now, it's not magic. Just because it's not involving the ball, it can still be coached, not as sequentially, because every time Lampard would get into the box and score, it's a different situation. It's not five steps left, Frank, three steps right, Frank, go. You know, every situation is different. But can you improve Lampard's skill at arriving into what's course you can? You can get him to practice different types of runs. You can get him to practice different types of runs in relation to where the ball is, where the defenders are, where the goalkeeper is. So skill is also the prerequisites for the execution of a technique. I think Craig might have mentioned that earlier, decision or movement. And skill development usually involves numerous factors and judgment-based decisions. Again, that example, skill, crowded penalty area. How do you lose two or three markers, get to the ball first, in a position, in a position to finish? That, that's very much skill-based. If you could uh, just, just move on, Chris, that'd be great. <clears throat> okay, so, I mean, this is, you know, this is not an exhaustive list, but there, there are some, some obvious examples of techniques in, in, in football. Um, shooting, an in-swinging corner. I mean, I could have said corner, but every corner is slightly different. Is it a dr driven corner to the far post? Is it an in-swinger to the near post, to the far post? A side foot volley pass. Again, quite specific, but, you know, a side foot volley um, is broken. There's different there's subsections to that technique. You can score with a side foot volley from 20 yards. It's a different technique to how you might cushion a side foot volley from, from five yards. It's a different learning process. Running with the ball, technique. Attacking header into the corner of the goal, technique. Defensive clearing header from a corner, technique. Uh, a step over and a dribble past the defender. That one there is the old favourite. Anything flashy, people think, oh, that's a skill. I don't think it is. Knowing when to do the step over is a skill, but being able to do it well and then get past the, uh, the defender is, is a technique. Skills, this, this one, I, there were less examples for this and you, you have to sort of think more deeply. So an example of a skill, um, that would be the timing of an attacking <laughs> run into the penalty area. <laughs> that's that's um that's a skill um losing your marker at a corner there are always players you know the, the big center back obviously they come up for a corner they've got a height advantage they might they might score but there's also they've got to lose the marker that is knowing that's knowing the game that's applying the knowledge of how your opponent's going to move the flight of the ball that's a skill um this is one i really like when you see a striker through on goal 1v1 their brain will be in a state of panic. If I'm through on goal, I feel like fainting because I don't know what to do as I don't know what finish to use. 
I don't know whether to go straight at the goalkeeper, try and go round them, try to try to chip it over them. It's not just the quality of the finish, but every time Haaland scores, he's making that decision in a split second. Am I finishing near post, far post, laces, side foot? Am I going to try and go through the goalkeeper's legs? That's a massive um, skill. And also, again, the one I used earlier, the centre-back. Some defenders love to go and attack the ball. Some love to drop off and, and take it on their chest. Again, these are all application of knowledge and, and skill. Um, I think there might be another slide, is there, Chris? A couple of pictures. I mean, you know, nothing, nothing earth-shattering here. Techniques. Uh, less the defender there, clearing the ball. Defensive header. You know, so obviously not great example. His eyes are closed. You wouldn't, you wouldn't coach that. But, you know, you would teach the, the, the takeoff. You would teach uh, bringing your, your torso back to attack the ball. You would teach what part of your head contacts what part of the ball. And I think that's John McGinn at Villa. Looks like he's having a volleyed shot at goal. Again, perhaps not a great picture by me because he's not necessarily looking at the ball, but he's hitting the ball in pretty much the sweet spot. Um, he's got his right arm out for balance, even though he's, you know, he's sort of falling over a little bit. His body looks quite strong. Uh, he's got his other foot on, on the floor. So again, the, these are techniques. And if we just move on again, Chris, you know, again, you look at these pictures here, these are skills. Now, you know, the one on the left is a little bit inconclusive. It looks like a little chip finish over Tim Howard, Tim Howard, sorry, America fans there, but that looks like a, a chip finish. But on the way to the goal, I'd like to ask people, what is the, what are the thoughts going through? You know, let's rewind that picture three or four seconds. Tell me some of the questions going through the striker's head. Howard is just coming off his goal line. The defender is closing him down. He's maybe 20 yards out from goal and approaching the goal at speed. What are some of the things he's thinking about? How much time do I have before the defender gets here? What's my angle on the goal? How much is Howard going to close down in the next two seconds? Yep. <clears throat> Absolutely. There are, we've got Derek here. Move the ball to the, to the best spot to, to shoot. That's a really good one. I think uh, both of you are talking about. I think Alan Shearer always used to say, if you're going straight through on goal, don't. Unless you're going to go through his legs, the keeper's legs are over his head. Always veer off to an angle because the key, the goalie's probably going to follow the ball and leave the opposite the opposite corner open. So again, you can see here, it looks like the striker has perhaps moved out to the right to create the angle to chip. There's a question. Is it better to try to get a penalty? Very prevalent in, uh, in modern football. Some strikers will be thinking, let's try and get a penalty. So again, that might be uh, another decision. But what, what else? If you're thinking about real detail knowledge, let's use Tim Howard as an example. I'm guessing, you know, international footballers will be aware of who they're playing against. What, the, what, what might they need to know about Tim Howard if you're through one-on-one -on -one with him? Anyone? Better get it high into the corners. Yeah, yeah. So very, very good goalie. Ben's just saying timing, space going in to meet the ball and the space given by the goalkeeper to know where to shoot in the, I didn't get the last bit. But again, what's Tim Howard like, you know, as a goalkeeper? Some goalies will fly out and try and, you know, fly kick, fly kick everything away. Some keepers might want to stay on their line a little bit more. So you're trying to evaluate all of this in, in the blink of an eye. The final bit is the technique. If your skill level is good enough to create the opportunity and your technique is good enough to finish it, that's when the two of them, the two of them come together. And the one on the right, I'd say, is a much more obvious example of a skill. You've got an attacking run. Now, the player off the ball is not touching the ball. So that is very much skill based. That player might be thinking, well, where's the space? Well, there's space behind. What kind of pass am I going to receive? Where do I want to receive it in relation to in relation to the, the second uh, the second defenders? Uh, I'm just looking here in the chat box. Just want to check I haven't ignored um, anybody. Okay, I don't think so. Just seeing another comment earlier from John about James Ward Prowse free kick technique, Southampton. Yeah, prime example of a, a master technician, in in my opinion. Um, are there any 
Can we go on again, Chris? My favourite. Um, now, again, you know, if I if I am proven wrong, then you can all please um, send a custard pie in the post and I'll s smear it all over my face. But I think I would be right in saying that Johan Cruyff, um, perhaps the most famous example of a previously unseen technique, had other people throughout history done something similar in their back garden? Yeah, but it was kind of a groundbreaking moment, the Cruyff term in, in a World Cup. People were like, what has he just done? He's, faint, he's fainting to cross. And look at the defender on the left-hand side. No idea what's going on. I think he followed that movement for another couple of steps. Um, but I'm pretty sure most people, coaches included, would say, what a great piece of skill that was. What a skillful player Cruyff is. I think that's wrong. I don't think that was a skill. The Cruyff turn is, is a technique. A turn is a technique. And I think this kind of shows just how, if we're lazy with things like this, you know, it just becomes like anything. It just becomes, um, we just consider it as, as correct. And I'm pretty sure um, I'd like to throw it out there again. Um, you know, this, this is not black and white. It's not hard and fast. I'm, I would like to think that that is a, is, is, a, is a technique, unless anyone's got anything else to say on that, on that example, you know, this, this. Yeah, Rob, I got a question on that. Can, can something like the Cruyff turn be both a skill and a technique? Because I agree 100% with you, especially after your explanation that this is a technique. But the choice of going to the defender's right where there's a bit of space, isn't that a skill? Let's say there were two guys covering the guy, then, then the technique would have not worked because the, the understanding of the game would have been lacking. He would have ran into the second and third defender. So can something be both a skill and a technique? Yeah, I, I, think you, I think you're absolutely right, Rick, and you're making the, you know, an, an informed an intelligent link between between the two and i think other people said earlier they they are they are linked you know the the, the decision making process evaluating the the position of the defender their uh, cruyff's position in relation to the goal were there other opportunities he is making skill based decisions the whole time in preparation for for the turn but i think where people are getting it wrong is if they quantify that statement and say that was so skillful because what Cruyff did, it's very, you know, lazy when we just kind of say great skill because kids then will say great skill. And the next day it's like, oh, what skills do you know? And kids are doing Cruyff turns, uh, drag backs, Ronaldo chops. And they're saying, you know, these, oh, look at those skills. Oh, great skills. Look at his skills. And it's like, well, they're not skills. And the danger I think where we're going with that is, as I was saying earlier, what is technique if, if that is a skill? No doubt, I agree with you, Rick, the build-up to it is, is skill-based. But if that there, look at Cruyff's right foot, look at him, you know, his body positions he turns out of it, we would teach that as, as, as technique. And if we're teaching that as a skill, then I think all of us are getting, you know, we're getting it quite badly, quite badly wrong there. Um, I hope, I hope sort of that, yeah, understood. Thank you. That totally clarifies it. Cheers, Rick. Anyone else before we before we move on? I was going to get a picture of a me doing a with their hands up. Uh, Ben's got his hand up. Right, yeah, Ben. Can I jump in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say like I totally agree with that being a, a technique, but um, looking, I was also going to say looking at today how much that technique has evolved. Like we see mm. lots of. YouTubers, if you like, yeah. developing that coif turn in many different ways and bringing out their own versions to it. So it's a technique that's been developed and, and evolved in many different ways because you see it on YouTube, all these like new generations of footballers like performing it and trying to teach people how to do it on YouTube and stuff. So it has been evolved in many ways, this coif turn, and has had many other skills as well. Uh, sorry, techniques, sorry. <laughs> Nearly fell into the trap there, Ben. Yeah, but almost. <laughs> I, no, I, ben, Ben's right. I mean, you know, I'm getting a bit older. When I was young, you know, football was, was very different. But, you know, 1v1s were much more simple. You know, if you saw a step over, you'd be like, wow, 
you know it was much more you know get into a space maybe a little sidestep and that's it when you look at players now I think you know like the showboating side of it we go again we go down that lazy line of if you see you know Cristiano Ronaldo in his prime doing three or four step overs a drag back putting his foot on top of the ball taunting the defender you know it's kind of oh look at the skills each one of those, although sequential and creative and instinctive, there's a tech, they're all techniques. Putting your foot on top of the football is a technique. Put, dragging the ball back with the sole of your foot is, is a technique. And as Ben says, I think Ronaldo's famous chop term, I first saw that 10 years. I remember Denilson, Brazilian Denilson. I saw him doing it on, on the wing once. He just chopped it inside and ran around the back. And I was like, what is that? I think that's uh, an evolution from Cruyff term. Because when I coach kids now, show me a Cruyff term, I know that's a bit of a, a dated example. It's very hard to get them to not do a chop. They're always chopping the ball. Instead, if you look at Cruyff there, look at the action he's getting with his, with his, his kicking foot. Completely different foot position to what you know, Ronaldo and many others do with, with a chop. He's taking the ball from forwards, straight line backwards. A chop, you're taking the ball sort of at a 45 degree um, degree angle inside. That's a, it's a brilliant point by Ben. Techniques evolve. You know, there will always be some techniques, side foot passing, long passing, heading. They're not going to go, but we are seeing more and more um, techniques. And it makes it even more important to understand what we're doing. It makes it, you know, as kids evolve the game and they do, you see incredible things. Even from kids who aren't great players, they all seem to have a couple of tricks that they can do now. See that I said trick instead of skill there. I copped out. But, you know, that is, again, an example. We have to learn the techniques and we have to know and we have to educate the players because all, all little kids will call these skills. It's our job to remind them that now that's not a skill, that's a technique. Because when we do a session on skills, they're going to know that it's something different. They're going to understand, oh, hang on, this is completely different to a technique. Um, yeah, so if we could go on, Chris. Christopher had her hands up too. Okay. She's still there. Probably gone to practice the Cruyff term somewhere. <laughs> okay, so the last the last couple of slides. Um, so there's there are some sort of a bit of finer detail to this, and we're not gonna we can't don't have too long to go too deep into it, but there are subcategories to technique and skill, in, in my opinion. Techniques are open or closed. And again, if you're not uh, a coaching person, I'll explain a little bit about that in a second, or a combination of the two. Penalty kick is an example of a closed technique because the ball is still when it's kicked. Defenders cannot try to block the kick and the penalty taker can take the kick in their own time, obviously within reason after the ref has blown the whistle. A shot at goal in a crowded penalty area is a technique. The technique is open in this case because it is influenced by the positioning and the movement of the defenders, the teammates, the ball, and the shooting position in relation to the goal. Now, I'm wondering if some people are there thinking, hang on, this sounds like a skill. Well, it does sound like a skill, but a shot is technique. It's not a shot into an open goal because that would almost be closed technique. There's, there's, you, you know, nine, 99 times out of 100, you've got an open goal, even if you're a terrible player. It's such a closed technique, you, you're going to score it. But if you're, you know, a high level, the goalie's blocking the near post, you're then going to have to do a far post shot. If the, there's a defender on the goal line, you might have to do a high far post shot to clear the defender. But that's a technique. You can coach somebody how to hit the ball high, hard into the far corner depending on, on the foot position. Even in sports textbooks, and as a PE teacher, this is one of the biggest things. I still can't believe that universities, colleges, high schools, secondary schools, whatever you want to call it, there's always a section, there's always a lesson on closed and open skills. I taught one a few weeks ago. In every textbook, they teach kids what are closed skills, what are open skills. They're not skills. You know, they would use the example, if we're going outside of, of soccer, football, um, Closed skills would be, if you ever watch darts, now when you play darts, you stand in a standstill, in a set position, the board doesn't move, you're aiming for the highest possible number, 
it's a repetition. You don't move your legs particularly, you don't move your hips. It's from elbow to wrist to finger release. That is so clearly a technique, but yet in textbooks, that would be, that's a closed example of a closed skill. And kids are learning this in schools. They're probably putting it in, in essays. It's not a skill, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a technique. You know, um, if we're, again, if we're talking about baseball, you know, if you're, if you're a batter, hitter, you know, you learn your baseball, you learn your baseball swing, you learn, you learn the movement of the bat, you learn how to, how to time hitting, how to time hitting the ball. Now that would be described as, you know, a closed stroke open skill. Again, I think that, I think that's completely wrong. So, you know, we need to, again, know what, when we hear closed and open skill, 99 times out of 100, I think it's wrong. It's a closed or a, or an open technique that we want to be talking about. But just, I don't know if anyone wants to add to this list, please feel free to jump in. If you're not really from a sports background or coaching background, or perhaps not so familiar with closed and open skills, I made a list earlier. The, the things that make something an, an open, sorry, a closed technique, the ball will normally be still. Um, the time span is predictable. Set pieces, you know, Ward Prowse, He's not rushed. The, the wall cannot break. He will approach the ball in his own time. Most of the players around are still, like the, the goalkeeper might be still, the wall might be, uh, might be still. A goal kick is a closed technique. Obviously, the outfield players might be moving around, but it's predictable. The goalkeeper knows their run-up, they know their, 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 their contact. And there's an obvious outcome. So a technique, you know, a closed technique, the penalty, there's an obvious outcome, goal or save. You know, when it's a more open technique, like a, a cross, a cross on the run, there's many more outcomes. Defender could block it. You could screw the ball behind. You could miss the ball. You can, you can find your teammate. You can find a defender. You might not even get the cross in because the defender might, might block it. So, you know, I mean, if we're talking about open techniques, I would say that there's less control on time. You're, you're pressurised for time. The ball is often moving. Teammates are moving. Opposition are moving. There's a different variety. There's a variety of executions. You know, so crosses. That's, again, a very broad topic. Are you going to cross it with the inside of your foot, the outside of your foot, high, low, hard? Are you going to spin the ball? Are you going to lob it up? Are you going to hit it flat? And obviously, open techniques is variable positions for everyone. People are moving here, there, and everywhere. I think we've got a couple more slides, Chris, but I don't know if anyone else wants to jump in. If anyone knows a bit about closed or open techniques, they want to add to those uh, things I spoke about. Nope. Everyone's thinking about the Champions League now. So let's get on to the last slide, I think, Chris. Thank you. Okay, so as some of you have been sort of gravitating towards I've, I've said here there's a spectrum um, I don't want to completely contradict everything I said some of it is very clear but some of it is not so clear as Rick was talking about the Cruyff turn yeah if you just practice the Cruyff turn on your own in your back garden it's a closed technique but as as, as Rick was saying under pressure dependent on factors there is a skill element to it so i said here like most things in life this topic is not totally black and white there are overlaps between the two meanings and areas where the differences are harder to identify so i've um if we move on to the last slide chris this this little line with a line in the middle took me about two hours so that's the extent of my diagram skills but the, the, the title is technique and skill overlap so on the left hand side we've got you know, let's say total technique, um, closed technique. On the right-hand side, we've got um, open, open skills. And the midpoint, the yellow point, is kind of where the two overlap. So just to recap, you know, if we're talking about very obvious closed techniques, examples there, penalty kick, corner, very clearly techniques, very clearly closed techniques for the reasons I've explained. As we move along towards the middle, open techniques they can start to appear more like skills so you know the Cruyff turn under pressure it is an open technique because the defender 
makes it open. Uh, the moving ball makes it open. His Cruyff's position in relation to all the other players makes it more of an open technique. He's not doing it in his own time. He's not saying to the fullback, hang on, mate, give me five seconds. I just want to quickly pull off a Cruyff turn here. You know, there's an element of surprise. So that is an open technique. If we look at the far right hand uh, side, I just have to, I can't totally read that because I've got everyone's handsome faces on the right hand side. But I think over there, I would have said something about um, open open skills. Can, can anyone read it out to me? Because I honestly can't see. I'd have to close this spot. What did I put for an open skill? What was the example I gave? Choosing a long instead of a dribble. I assume you meant to say choosing a long pass instead of a dribble out of the... Yeah, that, that's right, Rick. So let's say, you know, um, you're on the edge of your penalty area. Uh, you're under pressure from two or three players. Uh, it might be a little bit foolhardy to try and nutmeg the first one. Um, flick it over the second player's head and then, you know, dribble 30 yards into space. Uh, perhaps a more sensible um, application of the skill would be to think, hang on, that will not work. Um, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply my knowledge. I need to get the ball away from danger. I can see that there's space in behind the opposition defence. I can see that the players are closing me down very, very quickly. So that is the application of, of, of an open skill. I know people might be thinking, well, hang on, Rob, you said a long pass is a technique. It is. Everything ultimately ends in a technique. You don't play football without the football. So, you know, it's the, 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 the final pass. Yeah, I know it's a technique, but we'll be here all night saying we know it all ends in technique. But that is a very open scenario in which the skill is applied. And then if we look at the midpoint where I say technique and skill in tandem. Now, again, trying to find a, a, an obvious example we can all agree on is not so easy. But I've said where I think the two things meet. So it's you're finding space when you're marked to then score with a glancing header. The second part does not exist without the first part. And the first part is the prerequisite to the second. If there are 20 players in the penalty area, you're going to have to win the lottery to stand still and be able to just flick your head, you know, and score past good goalkeepers and good defenders. You're going to have to find that space, assess the flight of the ball, check where the goalkeeper is multiple times, see if the ball is spinning. And even other factors like, is you know, is it raining? You know, if it is, how is the ball going to fly off? How is the ball going to fly off your head? You know, how, how, perhaps the goalie is going to spill it. All these kind of things come into it. So that's where the two of them come together and this is not uncommon the examples might be harder to come by but when you're playing you know if you were standing on the side and saying is this technique or skill you'd be you'd be saying technique skill they overlap so so quickly you know you can't just have i'm just going to use technique for 10 minutes and then i'm just going to you know apply skill it's all the time technique skill that's a that's a technique that's a very obvious closed technique but hang on that one looked a bit like an open technique so, you know, with more thought, I think you can probably start to come up with, you know, you're using this as a kind of as a model to some degree, your own examples. I'm sure you could all think of more closed techniques, more open techniques, more closed skills and more um, and more open skills. But um, before before we go, I just wanted to to ask people, um, you know, we spoke about it right at the start, funny enough, that you can coach technique and you can coach skill. But but how? How how if you're with your 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 players, um, okay, and you want to improve their their techniques, give me an example of, of how you would organize your session. You know, let's pick an example. Okay, I want to improve the my, my players' um, crossing technique. What are you going to do in that session? If you want to improve the skill of your players, give me an example of a skill you might want to improve and how would you do it? What are the different methods and strategies you'd use to teach the two? Anyone? Okay. Well, I might say technique, I think is possibly easier in the sense that 
Um, it's sequential, it's more textbook, it's, it's easier to agree on, it's harder to disagree on. You know, if you want to, if you've got a group of eight year olds and you want to improve their crossing, um, it's going to be done by practice of sequential steps. You might do it 30, 40, 50 times, practice the run up, practice the contact, practice the follow through. Now we're going to do it under pressure. Now we're going to do it with a goalkeeper. Now we're going to do it as you're dribbling the ball down the line. These are all techniques, but you just progress it. You're still following the fundamental technical formula for, for doing it. And that's what you'll be doing all the time. But why not I asked you about how do we coach skill? This is where you have to think a little bit more about, you know, the example. how would we, for example, coach our centre-back to know when to attack the ball and head clear or when to give himself or herself 10 yards, drop off the attacker, take it down uh, and play out. How would you go about teaching that, coaching that kind of um, to, that kind of skill to your players? Any thoughts on that? What would you do? Are there any different styles? Would you try and yeah. teach the skill through technique, if you know what I mean? Would you, would you literally just practice firing the ball at them and talking them through the technical aspect of it, even though it's skill related? What, what would you do? teach the skill I, I mean there's only one way of doing it it seems to me which is with realistic game realistic pressure so either a 6v6 or an 8v8 using your wingers and make sure that the opposing team have wing backs trying to close them down so the winger uh, gets forced to not only focus on his technique which you probably want to teach at a younger age but once they get into their teens mm. I would say start adding pressure so they got to start reading game realistic uh, situations yeah no again really really good point with rick and i think what you're talking about there is you might want to start posing questions to your players now you know you can obviously use q a anytime but it might not be so relevant if you're teaching kids a six yard pass with a side foot i'm not sure how much q a you, you really need you know because it, it's quite regimented the learning style but if you're coaching crossing or crossing on the run, you are going to have to ask your players questions like, what are you thinking here? Why did you choose to cross it with curl there? Could you have waited? Could you have delayed the cross? So it might be a little bit more, um, you know, guided discovery when it, when it comes to skill. Show me uh, what you can do in, in, that, in that situation. I'm just seeing Sterling here skill discuss thought process involved and then going to practice taking into account age yeah so definitely thought process thought process is is critical you know with techniques there's thought but it's to say it's more textbook learning and you're going to have to say to your players you know tell tell me why you chose that at that moment because the technique the choice of the technique if you're saying right i'm going to cross it with the outside of my foot it might have been the right decision but at the wrong time, it's a disastrous choice. It doesn't matter how well you execute it. If you've done it at the wrong time and the path of the cross is blocked, you haven't been skillful. You've, you know, it doesn't matter if the technique was great, the, the cross, was, cross was blocked. But also, I think you need to start thinking about, you know, watching other players. You know, if, you're, if you want to score more goals, yeah, you practice your finishing. But I think, again, player analysis, which is, you know, go and watch someone Okay, watch Haaland for three games and then say to the kids, come back and tell me, not we know he's got a great finish. Why is he scoring so many goals? What did you, what did you see? What do you think he was thinking uh, before he scored the goal? What do you think he was thinking after he scored the goal? So I think you can get much more uh, deeper discussion, you know, and, and, and how much of it can the players learn? Some of it is just a feel. Some of it is, is a knack, is a an inherent skill but i don't think we should treat it like you know skill is like black black magic it's like witchcraft it's very much more um a thinking process and you know game game experience so as players play more games their skill levels will develop because they will be much have a much greater appreciation of you know we all know as players well, if you've played a bit you kind of know in certain situations what's going to happen next or what could happen if the player on the ball does this, does that. 
that is that is skill based. So in competitive play as well, I think you should be regularly stopping your players and saying, why did we do that there? What would we have done if he or she had played inside? What will, what would we have done there to nullify the space if they had hit the line? So I think you can get much more into skill. And if you can improve technique and skill, I think you're going to really get some dangerous some dangerous players because we probably work on technique far too much in some ways. That's great at a young age, but as players get higher, if they haven't learned the, the skill, the skill side of things so much, they're always going to look a little bit lost in match play. I'm sure you have some players who you think they're great in training or, you know, when I do closed techniques, they look great, but in matches, they just don't do anything. I think they're the players that lack skill. You know, maybe before this, you might have thought, no, nah, they're really good, skillful players. I don't think they are. They're the very good technical players in training. But are they effective in matches? Maybe not, because they lack skill. And that's kind of where I was going to leave it. Um, but I don't know if there's any any questions. I'm sure everyone's... I think it's me, Rick and Chris that are left at the moment. But um, no, I don't know. But... Um, or vice versa, Sterling says, yeah, awful in practice, but get the job done. There are some players you think, yeah, why do they perform so well every week? You know, you see them in training and you just think, God, I'm not sure they're going to perform. But they're the player that scores the last minute goal. They're the player that is in the right position to clear the ball off the line week after week. So, yeah, and I mean, again, I'll just throw it out to you. Any, any questions, any comments, any feedback? Um, any ideas what I can have for dinner? <laughs> Thank you, Rob. I thought it was a great presentation. And yeah, you converted me. I think it's, I'm much clearer on the difference. And I think it's going to take a while for me to really make this second nature because to an extent it's terminology, right? Language. Um, I have just one question. At the very beginning, Rob, you, uh, you said you did a lot of research on this. May I ask what that consisted of? Did you talk to youth academy directors? Did you... I'm just curious, really, where, what exactly the research consisted of. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if my friend Keith is is with us. I told Keith uh, I went to the university with a guy called Keith Moore, and he still ribs me to this day about this. My interest in this started about 20, 22, 23 years ago. I was at university, and we were in a lecture on on coaching, and the lecturer was a guy called John Hunter. Now John's quite old now. But John was a massive advocate of sport for all. His main sport was rugby union. He was involved in Gaelic sports. He was a big football fan, a huge, huge uh, person in sport in Ireland and in London. And he, his lecture, and I, ch 